Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this is part two of Transmission Line Transformers. If you have not viewed part one, which I published a few days ago, you should probably view it before viewing this video. Shown in this table here, that's partially obscured, are some of the transformer ratios we're going to be able to synthesize and show how um, SimSmith is suited to uh, analyzing these types of problems. So without any further ado, let's begin with a simple transmission line transformer. All the transmission line transformers we're going to talk about today in this video have a couple interesting characteristics. The characteristic they have, they will all have a various number of transmission lines. All the transmission lines will be the same electrical length. They will all be the same impedance. And the only differences will be the connection points on, on either end. The simplest transmission line transformer we could come up with would be a single transmission line, but it's kind of a degenerate case. If, it, if the impedance of this transmission line is Z0, the only impedance it matches is Z0 to Z0. Kind of boring. So I'm going to start with, with order two. Order two has two different transmission lines, excuse me, two individual transmission lines that are both identical. And for all these examples I'm going to go through, the high impedance side is going to be on this side, the low impedance side is going to be where the generator is, and the entire circuit is certainly able to be turned around, and it's just a mirror image, and you get the exact reverse transformation. So what we'll do for the beginning here is we will take the first, these two transmission lines, which are both impedance Z0, and we will put them in parallel. And by putting labels here, it enables me to connect the circuit up easier than drawing lines and, and worrying about whether the lines cross other lines and whether the circuit's readable or not. So if we put the first transmission line is connected from X1 to X2, X1 to X2 is the input. Notice I left ground off, I leave ground off here because it's easier just to leave these labels as being X on one side, Y on the other side. We'll take the second transmission line and connect it from 1 to 2. Now if we do not connect the output here and we expect these transmission lines to run at their characteristic impedance, then we would, we would need to have a Z0 load over here and a Z0 load over here. Those two impedances when put in parallel over here would be Z0 over 2. So how can we get a Z0 load over here? Well, it's a function of what the load impedance is. So let's put these two transmission lines in series and see what happens. So we'll connect this to Y, say Y3, and then we'll connect Y3 to Y to Y2. Now if we do that, the voltage that comes in here on this transmission line and the voltage on this transmission line both are delayed the same amount. There's the same voltage here and here, yet we stack them in series. So the voltage over here is twice the voltage that it is here. The current, of course, is half the current, but that's okay. So we look at this and what we see is an arc. So we see that this circuit is, no, is not constant impedance and frequency, and it's because we have the wrong impedance for the load. So let's start just varying the load and see what happens. We can see that we can come up with a load impedance I think most people know the answer to this problem. For a 50 ohm transmission line here, a 100 ohm load will match to a 25 ohm generator impedance. So G is the generator impedance, it's 25, 100 is the load impedance, and 50 is the impedance of the transmission lines. Since these are both dots now, and we, and we are sweeping in frequency, we're sweeping from 1.8 to 100 megahertz, Sim Smith says that this transformer is extremely broadbanded. Now, there's obviously, when you build something, there's little things that get in the way. But um, in reality, these are very broadbanded. So let's look at what we can do to this to try to understand it a little bit better. The first thing let's do is let's change the length of the transmission line. As we change the length of the transmission line up and down, we see that there's no difference in the, re in the impedance transformation. And that's a good thing. We need to have a certain amount of length of transmission line so that we can get the common mode impedance up here to be able to take these two transmission line, lines that are in series and then, in, excuse me, in parallel and then in series and be able to have an, 
and be able to have a high enough impedance to be able to do that, it takes a certain length of line. If we make this line long enough, we're able to do it without any magnetic material here, but that gets kind of unwieldy at lower frequencies. You see that done in VHF all the time. But um, it turns out the line length has nothing to do with this. Now, what happens if these two lines are not the same length? Well, we can define that one to be length 1, and we can set that to be 3 feet also. And, of course, we have the same situation we had before. What if we make this, say, 3.1 feet in length? And we get a pretty wild plot. Now, if we change the number of points in our plot to be something larger, we see it changes. What we're, what we're seeing here is there's one some frequency somewhere that things misbehave badly. And if we look at the SWR, we might be able to see that in SWR. Right there we see it. Somewhere a little, right 80 me, a little bit over 80 megahertz, we have a problem. That can be fixed by either not trying to use this circuit at that high of a frequency or by dropping these line links down. So if we go from 2 feet and 2.1 feet for the two links, you'll see we don't see that anymore. So if we stay below a certain point in frequency, we don't need the links of these transmission lines to be super accurate. There's a, a 2 and a 2.3 foot length. Certainly anybody could, cut, could calculate or could cut two different pieces of transmission lines and get within that length um, difference. And the reason I see a 2 to 1 SWR is because I'm obviously plotting this relative to 50 ohms. If I change this back to 25 ohms, that would be the SWR we would see. 1.06 at 100 megahertz for this much disparity in length. But if I make the links longer, say 5 feet, and this is 5 feet, I need to be much more careful. 5.1, say one. I have a problem at 50, a little bit under 50 megahertz. So as I make this length longer, I have to be more accurate in my, in my links, or I just have to avoid this frequency. And um, that's pretty common. So what we have, what we've learned so far is that what we have is a transmission line transformer that looks to be a 4 to 1 impedance ratio. But is it really a 4 to 1 impedance ratio? If I change this by, say, 10% to, say, 110 ohms, I start to see this is no longer one-fourth of that value, but I start to see a rotation. So transmission line transformers are not like conventional transformers. In the conventional transformer, you'd build to say to be a, a 2 to 1 voltage ratio or a 4 to 1 impedance ratio, and it would stay voltage ratio or impedance ratio better for um, over the short change in over, over a small change in frequencies. Over a large change in frequencies, it would it would start to become uh, unwieldy, but so does this. But this is not a good 2 to 1 voltage transformer. It's a great 2 to 1 voltage transformer at a very broad frequency range, but with one set of impedances only. That's one of the downsides. So let's go on to the next example. The next example is order three. We have three pieces of transmission line, and the reason we needed to move up was because there was only one configuration the two transmission lines could, could have. Series on one side, parallel on the other side. Now with three transmission lines, we have two choices. So now let's do the easiest choice, which is this side all in parallel, this side all in series. X1, X2, X1, X2, X1, X2, X1, X2. Hopefully everybody's following that these are connect connection points. Y1, Y3, Y3 is just an interim point to connect to this one. Y3 to Y4, Y4 is an interim point to get down to here. Y2 is back to that, back to the uh, one side of the load. This you would expect to, to be a 3 to 1 voltage transformer. So let's look and see how that works. If It's already been adjusted in frequency pretty closely. But what we see is, as we change the load impedance, here's the generator. So as we get closer and closer and closer to 150 is the right answer. Once we get to 150 ohms, on the, on the load side, we have a generator side impedance. This is, the load, this is the load side impedance of 150. The generator side impedance is 16.7, or 9 to 1 in impedance ratio, 3 to 1 in voltage. Now, of course, if we change the impedance of the 
generator to say something like, say, 20 ohms, we have the same si situation we had before, except now it's a 60, uh, 60 ohm input and it's a 6.66 ohm load. So by changing the impedance of the transmission line, we can change what particular uh, impedance, impedance, point, impedance points are flat with frequency, but in all cases, you still have the issue that it is a single it is a single impedance transformation over a broad frequency range. So that's the trade-off. So this is the first one, a three to one. The next one is again an order three transformer with three different transmission lines in it. But the first transmission line is connected across the low, across the generator. The second one and the third one are put in series and then connected across the, across the generator. So what we see here is we see this first transmission line having, say, a voltage and current in it relative to, to Z0. This one sees half the voltage that this one sees, and this one sees half the voltage that this one sees because this one and this one together are the same voltage that this one sees. So this one runs at, at, v, at a voltage and current. This one runs at half the voltage and half the current, half the voltage and half the current. When we get to the other side, the delay in all these three transmission lines is identical. We still have full voltage, full current here, half voltage, half current here, half voltage, half current here, if we are going to be running these transmission lines as if they were matched. On this side, what we can do though is we take this transmission line and put it in series with these two paralleled. So while this side has a voltage of one, let's just say, this side would have a voltage of one and a half, or V, V, excuse me, V, V over two, V over two, over here, V, V over two, V over two. We connect these two in series with this one so that we have V over, V over two plus V, and these two in parallel, since they each had half the current, they have the right current to match this one. So hopefully this all makes sense. You gotta get the voltages and currents both matching. So what we see in this case is a, trans, is a transformer that has a voltage ratio of 1.5 to one. 1 1.5 to one is a 1 1.5 to one squared or a 2.25 to one impedance ratio. Again, for a 50 ohm transmission line, that would match 75 ohms to 33.3 ohms. Actually, it's actually 33.3. I didn't click exactly in the center. So 75 to 33.3. And of course, as you vary this impedance, you change these two numbers, the 75 and the, um, and the impedance seen at the generator will track up and down. In all cases, it is a 2.25 to 1 impedance, trans impedance ratio transformer. So moving right along, We've exhausted the only two ways that we can connect three transmission lines, so now we're up to four. Two transmission lines had one choice for a transformer. Three transmission lines had two. Four transmission lines are going to have four choices. So the first case, and probably the easiest one to do, is to put all these, all these transmission lines in parallel, all these in series. By doing that, we see a voltage step-up ratio from V to 4V over here, and the current reduction, of course, from, from I on this side to I over four here. And again, this is very broad banded. Just like before, we see that the impedance on this side to the generator impedance is the same ratio as is to the, load, uh, to the source impedance. So we see it 20 to 50 to 12.5 or four to four. So it's a 16 impedance change and Again, we can change this, this impedance here to be anything we want, and there will be an impedance here and an impedance here that will match this to be, a flat, to be two individual points which have no frequency dependence at, at all. So this transformer can be defined as being a 25 to, excuse me, a 200 to 12.5. It could also be a 100 to 6.25 with 25 ohm transmission line, et cetera, et cetera. So moving on to the next one. There's a lot of these to go through, so I'm, Here's the next case. Again, four transmission lines. Here we have the top two in parallel with the generator, and the third and this this one acts as a third one that's in series and then in parallel. 
So this one would see V. This one would see the full voltage, full voltage, full current. These ones would see half voltage and half current. Since I'm going to put these in series over here, I have to parallel, parallel these two up because they have half current. Now it's a full current then. And this would then see one full current, full current, and then these two parallel would be full current. So this would be a step up of one, two, and a half. This is a two and a half voltage step up. Or it's a 6.25 to one impedance transformer. And with 50 ohm transmission lines, that gives you a 125 to 20 ohm transmission line, excuse me, um, impedance ratio. And again, like we saw before, if you change, change any one of these, you know, the load impedance, it doesn't act exactly as a constant ratio anymore. What we see in this case is this transmission line is across the full voltage. These three are in a series parallel, parallel arrangement where this one is in series with these two in parallel. So this one sees the full voltage. This one would see two thirds of the voltage and each of these would see one third of the voltage. And if these are too complicated to kind of visualize, you can always take SimSmith and have it tell you, show you the voltages across any of these transformers and uh, you'll see that that was true. And we, when we combine these on this side, we combine this one in series with this one to ground and then these two are in parallel with this one to ground. They were in series before, they're in parallel here. That gives us a 1.67, uh, 1.666 voltage ratio. And in the case of a 50 ohm transmission line, this would match 83 to 30 ohms. And again, you can scale this up and down by scaling the impedance of the transmission line. And for the fourth one, there's one more way we can combine these. And that is the top transmission line connects across the full, sees the full voltage. This one, this one, and this one are all in series, and then they are in parallel with this one. On this side, we see this transmission line is in series with all three of these in parallel. Remember, this one has, has, has a voltage and current. These all have one-third the voltage, they all have one-third the current. When we, when we put all these in parallel, they have the full current again, full current and full current. That gives us a ratio of 1.33 in voltage. So that would match 66.67 ohms to 50 to 37.5. And if you think for a minute that this that this is, means it's kind of only that impedance, just be, be you know, be reasonable that if this var varied by 10%, this rotation that you see here is not drastic. So you could easily use this, this circuit, not 10%, that was one ohm. Let's say I, I'm going to move this up, say five, one, two, three, four, five ohms. This could still be a pretty reasonable uh, transformation here this rotation isn't that isn't that big yet so it's not use useful only at that frequency it's use useful over a small range of frequencies around around that point but this was the fourth case for the order four transmission line transformers now I have done order five for this video which I will show I've also done order six but I can't figure out a couple couple order five will have eight different transformers in it Order six will have 16 transformers in it. I've only figured out 13 of them, so I won't present that. It's probably too much anyways. Starting again as I did before with five transmission lines now, all of them in parallel, all of them in series, and what we see is a five to one voltage step up. Five to one voltage step up means a 25 to one impedance, ra impedance ratio, 10 to 25 is 25. This is the geometric mean, uh, mean of, the, of the impedance ratios again. I don't need to say much else about, about this. Moving on to the next one, we see, start to see a complicated, something that gets to be complicated pretty quickly, but we see this transmission line and this one in parallel across the full voltage. These transmission lines down here, I'm sorry, three of them in parallel across the, across the full voltage. These two in series and then across the across the voltage here we see this side is in series with the second and third transmission lines and the fourth and and the fourth and the fifth are in parallel and they're in series with 
with the first three, giving us a 3.5 to 1 voltage range. So the first case, when they were all in, all in parallel and all in series, we got a 5 to 1 step up. Now we get a 3.5 to 1 step up. 3.5 to 1, another impedance ratio. All right, so here we go again. In this case, we see two transmission lines across the full, across the full voltage. We see then an arrangement here where we have one transmission line in series with these two in parallel, and that group is across the, the voltage. Likewise, on this side, we see this one in series with this one, and then these two, this one connects to ground, or to, to, to Y2, and these two are in parallel with this one connecting, these two are in series, and then in parallel with this one. This gets to be complicated, just stop the video, if you need to draw some lines on these things, I had a, um, it took me a few hours to go through all these. You see orders two and three in books all the time, published how, how they work. Orders five and six you never see published. Uh, I'm sure people have done it. I don't, you know, you can do it. I, I figured it out pretty easy, pretty easily for five, but it does take a while and you got to sit, you got to sit down and, and really concentrate, but you can figure it out. This one gives you a 2.67 ratio. So we had a 5 ratio in voltage, a 3.5, now a 2.67. So we get quite a few different ratios. We get quite a few different ratios. Now here we have two transmission lines, both across the, the generator. These three are all in series, and then across the generator. Similarly, on this side, we have these two in series, and then all three of these in parallel, and then in series with that. Again, the voltages and currents all, are all proper to be, to be added correctly. If you make a mistake when you're doing this and you get something wrong, like just to say you turned, uh, turn, let's, just tur let's just turn this around. So Y2 to Y4. You get plots that are no longer centered on this axis. They get, cr they get crazy looking. They have like double lobes in them. So you know right off the bat that you've made a mistake in terms of getting things phased. So we have 116 ohm to 50 to 21.4. Now this one, we already had a 2 to 1 voltage ratio transformer that involved only two transmission lines before. Why would we use this? And the answer is we wouldn't. But this just happens to be one of the cases of how we can hook this up. So I'm not going to I'm not going to hang out here for long because if you if you did this, you'd be you'd be foolish. You should have just done it with two transformers, or excuse me, with two transmission lines. Okay, in this case we have this transmission line across the generator, this transmission line is in series with these three are in parallel. So this one is in series with these three, and then that whole group is, in, is across the generator. Likewise, on this side, we have this one is in series with this, this one, and then this one here is in parallel with these three. As they were in series here, they were in parallel here. It's just, it's one side series, one side's parallel, but you can mix the series and parallels up as you wish. That gives us a 1.75 to 1 voltage ratio or an 87.5 to 28.6 ohm um, impedance ratio at 50 ohms. There's a couple more to go through here real quickly. And um, if I have not lost everybody by now or bored everybody to death, this one here has the top transmission line is across the generator. And then all four of those are in series across the generator. Likewise, over on this side, we would have this transmission line is in series with all three, all four of those in parallel. That gives us a 1.25 to 1 uh, voltage ratio. And then for the final one, we have, even, we have even a smaller ratio here. In this case, we have the, the first transmission line and the second transmission line in parallel with each other in series with the third, fourth, and fifth transmission lines in parallel. So these two are in parallel, and they're in series with these three in parallel. Likewise, over here, these two are in series, and they're in parallel with these three in series. And that gives us a 1.2 to 1 voltage ratio. And that represents what we did in the video. They calculated the impedances for a 50 ohm transmission line with two pieces of trans 50 ohm transmission lines, two pieces of transmission line. I got this transformer ratio in voltage. 
this impedance ratio, 100 to 25, 75 to 33. These two, the orange group is with three transmission lines. The green group is with four. The um, light purple group is with five. You don't see anything ever that was six, seven, or eight, even though those exist. The circuit complexity gets to be complex enough that a lot of times you're better off putting two of these circuits in series. If I needed something like, say, a eight to one ratio, instead of using eight transmission lines, I could put a two to one in series with a four to one. I'd have to change the the trans, I'd have to change the impedance of the transmission line for the second one. Of course, it wouldn't be 50 ohms again. But uh, we can see that there's a lot of there's a lot of ranges here. And, and what I did here is I took a 50 ohm transmission line, I paralleled two 50 ohm transmission lines, I paralleled three. Sometimes you see three paralleled in the case specifically right here of an output of a around an 800 watt solid state amplifier, 100 ohm transmission line. Two, two, line, two wires twisted together, Teflon wires, pretty close to 100 ohms if you don't twist too tightly and the insulation is the right thickness. But, you know, it, again, this is another set of impedances you can get. This is stuff that's interesting to me. I'm not sure how many other people are interested in this topic. I have not discussed at the moment any kind of issues with the fact that all these voltages, the common mode voltages on all these transformer, on all these pieces of transmission line can be different. In this case, of course, uh, in this case, they are different. Some cases are not all different. That means they would need to be wound on different cores, or maybe they could be wound, if the voltages aren't too far apart, you might be able to put them on one, one core if the core didn't couple too, too well. I have not explored any of that in any of these videos yet, nor have I explored any of the, of the, six, of the order six um, transmission line transformers. If anybody's interested in these topics, let me know. If not, I'm probably going to call it quits at this point in time. Transmission line transformers are not used a lot. A few different ratios are used are used pretty commonly, but they're not the they're not the they're not the panacea that some people make them out to be. But on the other hand, they're a very interesting piece of RF design. And as an interesting piece of RF design, it should be something that you're at least aware of on a, you know, on, at some level. And it might be something that for your design, you'd find would be the best choice. Hope everyone's enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know. If, let me know. Give me some comments. The previous video got no comments, so I'm not, a, I'm not so sure that anybody's even interested in these topics. Thank you very much.